I guess I'll start with my testimony. Uh, I was an ex-gang member. I guess you can tell I got shot and paralyzed. But I wasn't just only a gang member. I was running my, I, used, I was a gang leader. I used to run my neighborhood and all that. And uh, my, my story starts as I grew up my whole life wanting to be a gang member. That was my goal my entire life growing up because every single male in my family was a gang member. My dad, my uncles, my brothers, my cousins, like every single male was a gang member. So I always grew up like other kids might want to be an athlete or a movie star or something like that. I always wanted to be a gang member. So that was my goal my whole life. And then um, my family had a good reputation around my neighborhood where I'm from. So they were like main, main notorious and all that over there. So I tried to earn my own name, my own respect. So. I started doing like a lot of shootings and stuff at we very young. At 16, I got arrested for shooting, for like four shootings. And I went to the youth authority at 16 for several years. And everybody knows, about the youth authority knows it's gladiator school. Yeah. So by the time I got out of there, I was all institutionalized, I was even worse, all crazy and all of that. And being like that, that's when I, I ended up started running my neighborhood. I got out all crazy and all like that. And how my story kind of starts, well, is uh, I was working with some older Christian man, and he, uh, he started sharing the gospel with me, right? And uh, that night, I was supposed to do a shoot. Me and my homeboys, we already had the stolen car, the guns, and all of that. They were just waiting for me to get off of work, and we are gonna go do a shooting. And that, because that was my thing. I love shoot, I love to do shootings. Like, even though I had the power, I could tell them, was you, 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 go do this shooter, or go do whatever. But I just love that. I was just how I roll. I love to do that. So I was just myself. I'm shooting. You know what I mean? I'm rolling. So I was like that. And uh, so I was uh, at my work. And uh, I'm right there. And how the Lord works. And my older boss, he started sharing the gospel with me. And I never heard it like the way he, like I was raised Catholic and all like that. And I never heard one my whole life like that. I never heard it the way he was telling me. He was telling me about Jesus and all of that. So I was like, you know what? Uh, that's why I don't ever think that it's not personal. Somebody's not listening to you because if, probably at the time he would have said, this little knucklehead, he ain't hearing me, but I was hearing what he was saying. And uh, so he started uh, telling me about Jesus and all that. And I told him, you know what? Maybe one day I'll go to church. Maybe, you know what I'm saying? I go, I, don't, I ain't no hypocrite. I don't want to be no I'm half step or I ain't ready. Yeah. Maybe one day, if I ever get married and all that, maybe I'll go to church. But I ain't read, you know what I'm saying? I didn't say I should really get out of work, I'm gonna go do a shooting. But I was just like, nah, I ain't read. And then uh, he, I told him, you know what? I don't even think I can be forgiven. I did too many things. And then he's like, oh, you never heard the story about King David in the Bible? And I was like, nah. And he's also a great man of God. He was sleeping with a soldier's wife. He had a soldier killed. So he's like, I'm listening to so him. I'm like, all right. And then I went, and I didn't know how to pray. I was, like, I was a painter at the time. So I was in one room, I was painting. And I was on my knees and I said, God, how would it change? And it was true because at that time, I achieved the greatest that you could hope for in that lifestyle. I was running my neighborhood, I had the power, the respect, I had women, everything that a little gang member, or whatever, the wildest thing, I achieved. I was achieved everything, and I still wasn't happy. I still wasn't happy. So I said, God, how would it change? So sure enough, I, as soon as I got a I went, I did the shooting, boom, got in the high school chase, crashed. I'm in the county and I got seven felonies. I already did years. I was still on parole for shooting. So they got me again in the act, everything. I'm in the county. So I prayed. Like I thought about everything that my boss had said. And like I don't remember the words I said, but it's true that God knows your heart and He knew my heart. So I was just like, God, give me one more chance to get out. And I promise I'll never touch a gun again. Like I can promise, it, like I said, that was my thing. I love guns and I love shooting. So I was like, just promise me God, I'll never touch a gun again. I kept promising, promising. So I got saved, but like, I don't really know what, what that had happened. But that night I went to jail, I went to, I mean, I went to jail in the county and I had a dream. And it was a trip because in my dream, something came in my dream. And like, I couldn't see what it was. It was like a demon or something. Like, you know, you couldn't just see the face, but I just knew it was like, Argh. it was on me and it was furious. And like, my dream, I was scared, but then I said, you know what? Jesus. And I tried to say, Jesus forgave me. And when I did that, it left. And then when I woke up, I was a totally changed person. 
Like I remember, like just during the daytime and stuff like that, I'll be thinking in my head, I can catch my enemies like this, I can run yeah. up on them, let them have it yeah. like this. And I started thinking about doing things like that. And we should be like, damn, what's wrong with me? How come all I ever think about is how to hurt people and to yeah. do wrong? Like, like what's wrong with me? So, I, but all those evil thoughts and how I used to be, it was all gone. Like, it all left. It was all gone, and all of that. And I. I didn't understand what was happening, but I started going to Bible studies in there with the little Christian brothers in there in the county. And I was really started reading my Bible, and the Bible came alive to me. And not only did it come alive to me, I was hungry for something. Yeah. Grew up and learned and I remember when I used to be in juvenile hall and in the youth authority and all that, I used to try to read my Bible, but it was boring to me. Yeah. It was boring to me. I didn't understand it. It was like nothing. But after when I prayed and got saved and all that, and that's when the Bible that came alive to me and all yeah. like that. But the mistake that I made was uh, I don't want people to think I picked up the Bible in jail because I had a lot of respect and all yeah. of that. So I tried to walk on both sides of the fence. I was still keeping up the fellas and all that in jail, but then I would be reading my Bible when I was on the side. So I was doing, and you know, that that not very long. So I got blessed. I only got a few years. I went to stay to a level three yard. And the first day on the yard, like, Tell cotton like we need you. They told me, Oh, we need you to do this. And this yeah. So I started putting it down on the yard I was at, and so I ended up slowly but surely falling away. And even right there on that level three yard I was at, I ended up getting the keys to my area in that area. So I was even getting power in there in the pit. And then, uh, so the day I got out, um, all my homeboys were at my house, they had me a party. So it was like my family and all my homeboys. And uh, they're like, hey, we're happy that you're out. The neighborhood hasn't been the same since you've been gone and all that. We want you to go in the hood again and all that. And I try to tell them, like, nah, that's it for me. And they're like, yeah, right. You're just saying that because you're fresh out. You'll get around. You'll be back. And I was like, nah, I want to go to church. So they were, they were like, mad when I said that they were arguing with me. So I'm arguing with all of them, all my homeboys and, and my family and all that. And my own mother told me, I'll disown you if you turn Christian. Because my family hated Christians and all that. So I, like, I had all of that. Plus, I was fresh out. One sin leads to another. I started being with women, partying here and there. And then I ended up falling away. And how I got shot was um, I went, to, I got into some dude. And I went to his front door. And I was just going to kick down his front door. Go all up in the guy's house and just get him inside his house. That's just a little glimpse of the type of person that I used to be. Yeah. Just go to somebody's house, kick down their front door and go get out of their house. That's how I used to be uh, my whole life. And so I was, so like I was kicking down the guy's front door, he shot me out the side window. Boom. So I got shot and then I fell. And he was trying to shoot me some more. Boom, boom. But I was like trying to pull myself with my arms. And then they picked my uh, they picked me up, they took me in the car, and they were like, What's wrong with you? Because I didn't feel it or nothing, right? And then I had no blood. And they're like, What's wrong with you? And I told them, I don't know, I think I'm shot here, yeah, I can't feel my legs. And they lifted up my shirt and they told me, yeah, you're shot. And the reason there was no blood, because the bullet went through my lung. It went in my spine, so all my blood was going into my lung. So I was choking on my own blood. So as soon as they told me that, I was like, oh, man, I got scared. I was like, oh, man. So I told myself, hang on for the ambulance, hang on for the ambulance. So uh, the ambulance comes, the cops and the ambulance, they're all on me. They put it on me and me, and they're all talking. They're like, he ain't going to make it. He can make it. There's only chance to call for the chopper. So we tell him we're going to call for the chopper. We're going to airlift you and all that. So I'm like, all right. So I tell myself, man, hang on for the chopper. Hang on for the chopper. So finally it comes and put me in it and we're airlifting. We're finding the helicopter. And you can feel it when you're dying. Like I, you can righteously feel it. Like I could feel it that I was dying. Like I started, I was righteously dying. And I was choking on my own blood. And I got, I, I got scared. Like the only thing on my mind at that time was, I'm gonna go to hell. And that was the only thing on my mind was, I'm going to hell because I knew I was just kicking down that two story. I started thinking about when I was busted, reading the Bible and all that kind of stuff. So I just started calling out to Jesus. And it was a trip because I was all dying, scared, all like that. And then once I started calling out to Jesus, I just felt a wonderful peace came over me. And I was right, like I kind of, Describe it to you in words. This has never happened ever since like that. It was like the best that I can describe it, like if they shot me up with a bunch of morphine or something like that. Because I was all dying, all like that. And then I just felt so at peace and so I comforted. 
And then ever since that day, the Lord has been just using my life for like so many things. Even, even right there in the hospital, the, the, the doctors were like amazed. They were like, man, we never seen a dude like you before. Especially when they're young and we tell them they're never going to walk again. Usually we have to give them antidepressant medicines. But the Lord gave me peace for my situation. And even though it was recent one time that you're talking, it came to my hospital room and it was full like this, full of gang members all almost room, my <laughs> hospital room. And they were like, we're going to go get the dude. No, no, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna roll right now. We're going to get that food. So yeah. I to them. And I was like, you know what? Let him go. And they're like, what? What you mean? And I'm like, yeah, just let him go. I don't understand. I don't know what's going on with me. But I forgive him, man. I forgive him. Just let him go. And then I ended up starting, as soon as I got out of the hospital, I started up going to juvenile halls. I started going to juvenile halls, doing Bible studies. And there, the little kids loved me. Because I turned out I used to be like you. Know, you know, I was in juvenile hall, I ate, pen, all that stuff. You know what I mean? So then I started going to prison. And I started speaking at different churches and car shows. The Lord and the Lord speaking, sharing the door open. I shared with a lot of my ex gang member homeboys. Yeah. And then my whole family got saved. Oh, come on. My family got saved in the Lord. And I say that. But none of it is me. Like, I don't get a twist. I'm not saying okay, no glory at all. Yeah. God, it was all yeah. God. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But He left. That's why I said I was supposed to die that day, but He left me for a reason. Yeah. And that's why. I used to be a soldier for the devil. Now I'm yeah. a soldier for Come the Lord. But yeah, that's uh, and then it just just like that. And then I ended up being a chaplain, so I'd go around the hospital praying with all the patients in the hospital. And then when I was when I was a chaplain, that's when the Lord called me to start um, Lexit. And Lexit is a Latino exit for the Democrat oh, Party. I tell both the Bible, you know what I'm saying? But vote, vote your godly moral values. So yeah. that's what we've been uh, pushing it. I've been like, so imagine, dude, me, ex gang member from yeah. Young, from Hood, all that. I was at the White House six times. Oh, wow. Imagine that. Six oh. times, and I've been all over America, and I've been to Tennessee, and the biggest names I've been. With and that's just with God. That's what just shows you with God, all things are possible. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you can use me, you can use him, anybody. And then don't think also that He didn't save you just for you. God wants to use you yeah. for His glory, not just for your own self.